It's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you days 12 and 13 of my artist trading card a day challenge that is going on, offered by our Art Joy of Sharing Art community on Facebook. If you still haven't joined our group, you can uh, use the link below the video and go and ask to join. Just make sure that you s answer the questions that pop up or we won't accept you because that's, that's some protection for the people in the group. So um, what we're doing, artist trading cards a day. What's an artist trading card? It is a, a little art bit that is three and a half by two and a half inches. Um, it could be a rectangle, it could be another shape, as long as it fits within those parameters, the same size as a playing card, um, a, po a Pokemon card, that type of thing. So also in our joy of sharing this month, we're talking about surfaces and working on different types of of substrates. And for day 12, it was music paper. And so I grabbed a piece of music paper and I want, it's it's flimsy, so I wanted to have it to be a little bit more heavy than that. So I mounted it on top of a piece of watercolor paper that was cut to the right size. I thought it would be fun to have torn edges. And so I tore around the card, um, making the music paper have torn edges. Uh, using a a metal ruler to keep my lines straight so that it would just have kind of these fluffy edges around the outside. And then um, it had music paper. I thought about singing and I thought about how birds sing in the morning and so I decided to make a bird. I drew the bird and it's, you know, it's a whimsical drawing. It's not meant to be realistic. I drew it in pencil over the top of the paper and then I decided I wanted to paper piece it with some collage paper, something I like to do. Now this is not paper painting, that's a different a different collage technique, this one's paper piecing. So I took a piece of deli paper and I traced over the bird so that I could get the pieces, um, you know, to have a little pattern to cut out the pieces. And then I picked some different painty papers, gel prints, stenciled paper, whatever. Uh, I was looking for color more than pattern. And I started cutting out my pieces and gluing them down over the top. I decided to not have a bird body. I decided to leave that part of the music paper. So I didn't cut out like the whole body. I just cut out the tail, the wings, the tummy, the eye, the crest, the stupid little beak. <laughs> that one was tricky. The tinier the things get, the more my fingers seem fat and clumsy. Uh, you know, that's just how it goes. So I also, um, I made a couple of the pieces layered. I cut out the wing first and then I cut another little piece out of, that was smaller and pasted it over the top to give it a little bit of um, color variation and interesting dimension. Although the pattern on that looks pretty cool too. So I could have just left it as a stenciled piece of paper, I think. I think it's deli paper, it's pretty light, flimsy. And then, um, you know, the belly, I made a couple different pieces for the belly to give it kind of like a little bit of a highlight maybe, just to make it more interesting. The more different patterns and colors you put on there, the more interesting it becomes, I think. Of course, you can go overboard, <laughs> but, you know, in general, more interesting. So I gave it a yellow belly, but then I, I added some of that, some red paper and made it kind of two-toned. Still just leaving the main body of the bird, the color of the music paper, which I thought I would leave it like that. I didn't end up leaving it like that. I never really leave anything alone, do I? And I needed a crest, um, a beak, some little feet. I'm getting there though. I think I did the crest and the eyeball next out of some black paper. The bird looks like it has a mohawk. 
I probably could have made that crest thing a little bit smaller. It's definitely a mohawk bird, but you know, it's fun. It's different. It's silly. That's what I was going for, so it's all good. Um, I made a little black paper eyeball and glued that down. It kept moving. Also, I'm trying to make sure that I put the paper over my lines, my pencil lines. It would look pretty silly if you could still see the lines, right? <laughs> you know, I gotta make sure. So then once I had all my pieces with the exception of the feet, oh, I still haven't started working on the beak yet. I made the beak. First I tried to draw the beak. Then I made, then I cut the beak and um, you know, using the pattern, which it was super, super tiny and hard to cut. And uh, I don't have any scissors, but the tips are very, very sharp. All the tips are dull on my scissors. I probably need some new scissors. Even though I have like six or eight pairs on my desk, I still can't find one that's sharp enough. So then I went to glue it down and I somehow, I don't know what happened, but I ended up losing it, losing this little beak. I guess when I went to wipe off the extra glue, I lost the beak. <laughs> you can see the struggle is real when you're getting down to tiny little pieces and big fat fingers. <laughs> so then I ended up making it in two pieces and just randomly cutting it. And that turned out okay. Might be a little bit bigger than it was in the drawing, but you know. So then I decided to use a Stabilo All pencil. This type of pencil is highly water reactive and you can blend it out and make it into sh some shadow. And I thought that would be nice over the, the music paper because I got the whole black and white situation going on. Thought it'd be nice to have some shades of gray. So I drew around everything and then I blended it out with a water brush and, um, Tried to keep it somewhat contained, but a little bit blended. I didn't like blend it complete, completely out to the edge. Um, because this is like also enclosing this body part that is part of the music paper. I did a little bit of mark making a couple places with a white Posca pen, just for fun, adding more pattern. And then I needed little feet. So I cut those out of the same uh, kind of pinkish pinkish paper that um, I had for the beak. Also tricky, I ended up getting out my tweezers to um, help me there because my fingers were just too big to deal with the little teeny, teeny, tiny feet. I think after all this, all these ATCs for the month of June, I'm going to want to do something really big because it's, I'm getting tired already of tiny, tiny things and we're only just about halfway through. It's like, oh, they're so tiny. Everything's so tiny. So then I decided to just use a little bit of translucent color in a yellow <clears throat> to, to make the bird not the same color as the background, even though it still has the, the, um, music notes showing through. So I used a crayon for that. Then I thought that my branch needed some leaves and so I got this piece of stained deli paper and cut out leaf shapes out of that. Um, the deli paper of course um, with just just stained like this with I think some alcohol ink. It's translucent so the music notes shine through it as well. You can see them through so it's not covering anything up because really the idea was to be focusing on the music paper on this one has the surface and something interesting I like that this paper was see-through and just kind of a couple of variations of green which makes it interesting if you want to make some paper like that just get some alcohol ink and some deli paper and just squirt the ink on and then scratch a card across and spread the ink over the paper and it just stains it, but it's permanent 
and so that works out pretty good. Then I decided to just uh, have a little bit of translucent color over the background as well, not, not changing anything, but just giving a little bit of blue sky. So there you have it, the little music paper, ATC for day 12, I believe. Yeah, day 12, I'm pretty sure. I did add the word later. You'll see it in later in the video. <laughs> so moving on to day 13. Day 13 was about napkins. And I wanted to show you guys that you don't have to just use one napkin. You can use multiple ones on the same project and you get a different look, um, changing it up a little bit. Uh, I was taking apart the napkin layers though. You just want to have the top layer when you're doing napkin, napkin um, collage or applique, some people call it. Um, just the top printed layer. Those other two layers, you should keep them. And or if there's two or there's sometimes only one other layer, it depends on the, the quality of the napkin. These are paper napkins, not cloth. And they are really great for making like mark making collage paper and stenciling, you can use those those other layers. So don't throw them away, just keep them and um, do some fun stuff with them because they are nice, thin, translucent papers for collage. So another fun thing about napkins is that um, the way that you can cut them. If you try to cut them with scissors, they're slipping and sliding around and being crazy and hard to cut up with scissors unless you mount them on something else which then becomes another layer which you could do you can absolutely do that if you want to cut um, you know cut out a real a real specific piece of it you could put it onto like some deli paper and it would still be thin enough but give it enough stiffness to cut but if you're just trying to cut just the layer it's really tricky so what I do is I use a water brush and I go around my thing and I then tear it out and it becomes really easy to tear out the pieces. This also works for tissue paper if you do have stamped tissue paper. And then you get kind of a fluffy edge that looks really nice when you're collaging it. So I had three different napkins. One of them was just, just had some like tie-dye color on it. So I used that one first and then I tore out some decorative edges of from another napkin and I put it on the top and bottom of the card. I'm using matte fluid medium and a very soft brush. If you're collaging and you're trying to put it on there and you press too hard, the napkin will tear or wrinkle. So you're trying to um, not have any wrinkles. And so use a soft brush when you're putting it on. So then the last thing I wanted to put on the top was a collection of cactuses. I wanted one to overlap the other. And if I did it, if I just put it on there, you wouldn't really see this peach and yellow colored smaller cactus in a pot. So I put white gesso on the back of the napkin, just in that part, so that it's now opaque instead of translucent. And then when it goes over the top of the other pot, it covers it. So that's just a little trick for you. <laughs> Put some paint on the back where you want it to be more opaque because translucency is awesome but sometimes you need it to be opaque. <laughs> so now I have uh, a collection of three little cactus in pots over the top of a colorful background over the top of some some interesting uh, edging in gray, which is a neutral. It's a nice composition. I decided I wanted the illustration lines. The napkin that has the um, cactus on it has some illustration lines around some things and some not. So I decided to go with 100% of the illustration lines. So I'm using a 0.05 <coughs> illustration pen. Make sure that your stuff is dry when you do that. And I went around all the shapes, then I used my fine tip uh, white Posca pen to do a few little lines here and there. Um, colored in the birdie, the birdie was just drawn on there with black and not colored. So 
And I touched up a little bit of this one cactus. There was a place that was torn, so I needed to touch it up. So I added a little bit of crayon to it. It's an interesting look. You'll see when it's got the close-ups. looks a little bit different than the others. And, um, yeah, that was it. I think this was a simple card, but it looks complex because of the different layers of napkin. So I recommend you give that a try. Don't just slap one napkin on there. Layer them up and see what you get because one will peek through another, which will peek through another and make it more interesting. So the last thing I did was get out this little tiny uh, letters stamp set. This is an old one from Stampin' Up! And they're just tiny little letters. I stamped the word love on here, on this one, because I love the desert, I love where I live, and it kind of represents that. I also love little birdies. And then I stamped the word sing on the other one, because that's what it was about. So I hope you've jo enjoyed these two ATCs and you are playing along with us all month long for ATC A Day from Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook. It's always fun to make these little tiny things each day and, and uh, get creative and have some fun. If you did like it, make sure that you give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, uh, subscribe to my channel, join my channel membership if you'd like to. Um, the free content this month will not be an ATC. <laughs> so that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.